Welcome to the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. I am so glad you could join me. I want to say to the mothers out there, Happy Mother's Day. If you have your mother with you, you should show her some appreciation. However, I also want to say thank God for the person who decided to set mothers aside. But Mother's Day should also be every day. It just so happened there's a day set aside that we honor our mothers. So once again, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers expecting to be mothers. And if you have your mother, show her some appreciation for all that she has done. You know, I heard it said today in the sermon that some people say, well, my grandparents raised me. I didn't have a mother in my life. My mother was this or my mother was that. But look at the blessing behind everything that you said that your mother wasn't. She so had fixed up to where somebody took care of you. No one found you in a dumpster. You weren't aborted. So you have something to thank your mom for because if you have made it this far, one realized it was by the grace of God. But most importantly, it was also the fact that God looked down on your mother that birthed you, allowed you to be in this world. You weren't found in a trash can and you weren't aborted. So give God some praise for that. Anyway, today we're going to go into the book of Psalms, the 95th number in the book of Psalms as I was reading over that it caught my attention and I want to share it with you it's a look at we're going to look at worship and warning I know it sounds kind of strange to have worship and warning in the same breath but this Psalms 95 is twofold for it starts out talking about worship and I also want to say that those of you who are listening to this who may not have a church home, please feel free to visit the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church located at 1555 North Hydraulic. We are pastored by the Milton T. Colbert Sr. Our service times are 11 o'clock. We also have Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 620 you're welcome to attend that if you can't attend the Sunday morning service. So we would be glad to have you. Once again, this is the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. And I hope you enjoy today's lesson as we will look at worship and warning coming out of Psalms 95. I will be coming out of the Christian Standard Bible. I may also reference the new uh, the, the King James Version. But I will be coming out of the Christian Standard Bible. And we pray that the reading of God's word will truly bless and enrich your lives. So it says, come, let us shout joyfully to the Lord. Shout triumphantly to the rock of our salvation. Let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song for the Lord is a great God a great king above all gods the depths of the earth are in his hand and the mountain peaks are his the sea is the sea is his he made it his hands formed the dry land come let us worship and bow down let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep under his care 
Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was disgusted with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. Once again, may the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and doer of his holy and most righteous word. So let us get into this word. As we see in the first verse there, it says, come, let us shout joyfully. Well, I don't know about you. I oftentimes when I am conducting the service at my home church, it's a recurring theme for me to encourage those to shout joyfully, encourage them to make some noise. Just don't come to the service just to sit and be a spectator. You may not sing in the choir, but from your seat, you can still be involved by waving your hands, showing some sign. The, the Bible declares that if you have been redeemed, you ought to say so. So because God is the rock of our salvation, believers ought to shout joyfully to him corporately. In other words, when we come together, Anyone that can recall the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, where they were in one place on one accord, is when the Spirit met them. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it didn't just stop there, but it filled the house. But back to this, because God is the rock of our salvation, believers ought to shout joyfully to him corporately. In other words, when we come into the temple, we should come in with a praise on our lips. Actually, it should start from the moment we wake up, open our eyes and realize our feet done hit the ground. Our eyes have opened up wide and we can see around us that we have the activities of our limbs, a reasonable portion of our health and strength, clothed in our right mind. We have too much to be thankful for to sit up in the temple quietly. Our praise is rooted in God's power to save us. He alone is a great king above all gods. Because he is the creator of all things. The mountain peaks, the sea, the dry land, verses 3 through 5. When people in the ancient world came into the presence of kings to whom they were subjected, they would bring gifts. When we enter our king's presence, the gift we bring is thanksgiving. Go back to that second verse because it reads like this. Let us enter his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song. For who he is, what he has done, and what we are trusting him to do. So that is our gift to him is thanksgiving. We go down here to verse 6 and 7, where once again we're being invited, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. That, that's personal. He is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the sheep under his 
care. So the psalmist calls God's people to demonstrate their submission to him by bowing before him. In verse six, a posture symbolizing the recognition of his sovereignty. Like sheep depend on their shepherd to protect and provide for them. So we, as the people of God's pasture, look to him for every good thing we need. Verse 7, the A part of that verse. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to take a pause. And when I come back, I will conclude this lesson for tonight on worship and warning. Worship and warning. Hope you're enjoying this version of the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith. I will be right back, so don't you go nowhere. Welcome back to the Sunday Word with Minister Anthony Smith on a Mother's Day evening. Hope you have enjoyed this Mother's Day, mothers. Hope you are being treated with the royalty, dignity, and respect that you so much deserve. I definitely want to say Happy Mother's Day to those of you who have had a hand in my upbringing. There's only a few that are still left, so I just want to say thank you to them. Uh, one of them I went to see today, her name is Miss Shirley Jones. She was the, actually the first mother figure outside of my own mom. Because I used to go to kindergarten half a day and while I, after school, go over to the Jones's house. So it's always good to get back. And even though her health isn't the greatest, it's good to still see her around. So I want to say thank you to the Jones family for sharing your mom with me all these years. For she definitely had a hand also in my upbringing. As they said back in the day, it takes a village to raise a child. And trust me, there was a village that surrounded me. I couldn't do no wrong. Because all they had to do was say, boy, I'm going to tell your daddy. Boy, I'm going to tell your mama. But you know, them people, they earned that respect. Because they lived the life that they talked about. So I can appreciate them. I also wanted to, and before I get back in this, I also want to send a shout out to Paulette Jordan, who is still amongst us. She was over the Starlight Band at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. And... I was part of that group, grew up with her son and grew up with plenty others and she's still around so in essence she was a mother figure too. The good Lord has left, kept her around so I'm thankful for her. Also thankful for my cousin who could have easily passed for my mom's daughter which was my mom's niece. Her name is Marilyn Word. Hope she hears this. She's been a plenty of things to me over the years. She's been a cousin, she's been a sister, and she's been a mother. Do I need to say anything else? So for that, I want to say thank you and give them their flowers while they can yet smell them. Yes, they deserve those applause right there. So now we're going to get back into the Sunday word. 
we had left off talking about the, what the psalmist called God's people to demonstrate, which is their submission to God by bowing before him. So now we're going to look at verse 7. I'm going to read verse 7 in its entirety. It says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep under his care. Verse 8 goes on and says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massah in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was disgusted with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. So from there, we go from worship into a stern warning. Because he then urges his readers to listen and obey the Lord's voice. That's the B part of verse 7. He pleads with them not to harden their hearts. That is, to willfully reject God. In other words, I'm going to do what I want to do regardless. Not thinking about the consequences. Or, let me just bring it close to home. Not my daddy. Can't nobody tell me what to do. I got all the answers. Well, according to the word, you don't have all the answers. And right now there's a plea going out not to harden their hearts. That is to willfully reject God. And he reaches into the past to give them an example of what such rejection looks like. At Meribah, there was quarreling. And at Massa testing. Israel complained to God after the Exodus demanding water. Verse 95 verse 8 see Exodus 17 verses 1 through 7. But this was not the end of their rebellion. They continued to test God. Kind of like let me bring this close to home. Kind of like a child when your parents tell you not to do certain things. But yet, if I can bring it down to a language that we can understand, as the older parents would say, they must not know that fat meat is greasy. As children, I was guilty. I did what I thought I could get away with as long as I didn't get in trouble doing what I did. Thank God it didn't lead to rebellion. It says, but this was not the end of their rebellion. They continued to test God and eventually, see, the old saying goes like this. When you play with fire, you get burnt. Here's an example of getting burnt. It says, they continued to test God and eventually refused to enter the promised land. Verse 9. Therefore, God gave them their wish. Swearing, they will not enter my rest. Verse 11. That is, they would not experience the blessings that come through a right fellowship with him. See all the things that we relinquish when we don't simply do what God tells us to do. When we do not fall into submission to him by bowing down before him. We forfeit our blessings. And it's been said that actions speaks louder than words. And sometimes by our actions, they do not line up with our words. Amen, somebody. So once again, he said they will not enter my rest. That is, they would not experience the blessings that come through a right relationship with him. As a result, that generation was spending 40 years in 
the wilderness and die there. Verse 10. And their children entered the land instead. You can go back and reference Numbers chapter 14 verses 11 through 38. The author of Hebrews quotes Psalms 95 to warn believers not to miss out on God's rest, his blessings and favor by following a path of unbelief and disobedience. You will find that reference in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 7 through 13. And I think what I want to do, I want to actually go ahead and end on that note and give us a clear picture of just what the word is saying to us. Because oftentimes we as ministers, teachers of the word of God, we like to inject a lot of selfism. But can I tell you something? I did not die for anybody that is listening to this podcast. If there's going to be any saving power, it's going to be from the word of God. I understand that some of what I'm doing is foolishness. Yes, this, what I'm doing is foolishness. And I have the Bible to back me up in the book of Romans. It says where the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those that are what? Perishing. And I did a podcast on that. So I choose to do this foolishness. Because to some it is. But to others it is the gift of God and eternal life. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to close out on Hebrews chapter 4 verses 7 through 13 to give us clarity on what that last outline was telling us. And it starts with the seventh verse. It says he again specifies a certain day today. He specified this speaking through David. After such a long time today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. Therefore, a Sabbath rest remains for the for God's people. For the person who has entered his rest has rested from his own works, just as God did from his let us then make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall into the same pattern of disobedience. Once again, may you be blessed by the hearing, reading, but most importantly, doing of God's word. Well, I just want to say that I am very grateful that you have taken the time to listen to this podcast. I hope that it has been a blessing to you. And if it has been a blessing to you, don't just keep it for yourself. Share it with others. Because you may be able to get this out to people I don't even know. For we are laborers together with Christ in this ministry. And it behooves us to get this word out in times like these. Because we are dealing with a perverted disobedient generation of people nowadays and if it's going to change it's going to be by the word of God so Lord God we pray that this word will not fall on deaf ears that this word will bless somebody those who I may know and those who I may not know let this word go forth bless me the one who has given this word And let this word be a blessing to me. Let it also be a blessing to others that may hear this as well as share this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Until the next time. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Once again, happy Mother's Day.